Ah, ist das schön hier in Österreich. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zur Austrian Pro Championship 2023 in Seefeld. 2023. Es gab viel Regen in den vergangenen Wochen. Mittlerweile haben wir ganz viel Sonnenschein und die Pro Championship ist vor der Brust. Nochmal, jetzt persönlich, hallo und herzlich willkommen neben mir. Da freue ich mich sehr, der frisch gebackene Rookie Champion 2023. T-Shirt ist noch nass, hatte kaum Zeit, sich auszuruhen. Lukas Wagesreiter, schön, dass du da bist. Danke Guido für die Einleitung. Freut mich natürlich riesig, heute Vormittag das Ding geholt zu haben, heute hier bei DAIR zu sein. Und ganz ehrlich, im Vormittag habe ich nicht so geschwitzt wie hier jetzt mit dir. Bist du nervös ja, auf das, was da gleich abgehen wird? So, jetzt sind wir wieder da. Kurzer Bildausfall. Ich habe ehrlich gesagt gar keine Informationen. Ich höre kaum was, für nur den Floti auf der Bühne. Deshalb würde ich wahrscheinlich auch sagen, wir gehen direkt auch mal rüber wahrscheinlich zum äh, Floti, der gerade so ein bisschen Stimmung macht, auch für die Fans hier auf der Bühne, bevor es dann gleich losgeht. Seid bereit. Ich darf euch jetzt unsere Offiziellen vorstellen. Die sind ganz, ganz wichtig. Steel Timbersports hat sich in den letzten Jahren extrem entwickelt und ist sehr hoch technologisch geworden und so, das heißt, wir haben Videokameras überall, wir hängen auf tausendstel Sekunden messen und das ist ganz, ganz wichtig, dass es hier jemanden gibt, der dafür sorgt, dass das auch alles so funktioniert, wie es sein soll und deshalb freue ich mich jetzt, unsere Judges hier auf der Bühne begrüßen zu dürfen. Ladies and Gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Bart Janssen. Our first judge of the day, he is assisted by Dr. Jörg Kurzenberger. Herzlich willkommen. Die haben sich den Applaus wirklich verdient, haben heute Vormittag schon bei den Rookies und auch beim Damenbewerb hier wirklich ganz, ganz viele sehr, sehr knappe Entscheidungen hier fällen müssen und haben das wirklich mit Bravour geleistet. Aber ich habe auch von Videos gesprochen und wir haben auch einen Video-Judge, den wir jetzt hoffentlich gleich zu sehen bekommen. Das ist Jules Janssen. Auch er bitte hier mit einem Applaus zu versehen. Hochtechnologisiert, wir sehen es ja, der beobachtet da gleichzeitig, ich weiß nicht, wie viele Bildschirme, also es wird hier wirklich darauf geachtet, dass alles höchst professionell und so gut wie nur Menschen möglich über die Bühne geht. Aber das Wichtigste bei so einem Bewerb sind natürlich die Athleten und auf die freuen wir uns jetzt ganz besonders. Ich ersuche um einen Riesenapplaus für unseren ersten Athleten, für Christian Perauer. 2019 Dritter beim Hungarian Rookie Cup und 2021 beim Austrian Rookie Cup eine Silbermedaille geholt. Also ein ganz, ganz heißes Eisen. Aber das sind sie alle zehn. Und wir kommen zu unserem zweiten Athleten. Herzlich willkommen, Johannes Hansi Maurer. Der hat den österreichischen Rookie Cup gewonnen und zwar 2012 und Dritter war er bei der österreichischen Staatsmeisterschaft 2018, also auch einer, auf dem man wirklich achten muss und bei dem alles möglich ist, aber das gilt auch für unseren nächsten Athleten. Ich suche um einen Riesenapplaus für Peter Ritsch. Erster beim Italian Rookie Cup 2017 und bei den National Championships, also bei der österreichischen Staatsmeisterschaft 2021, da hat er ebenfalls abgerockt und einen zweiten Platz geholt. Weiter geht's mit unserem vierten Athleten. Herzlich willkommen bei uns auf der Bühne, Stefan Penker. Ein Mann mit viel Auslandserfahrung, Zweiter beim Italian Rookie Cup 2018 und auch eher einer, der jetzt langsam aber sicher bei den Pros hineinwächst und das gilt auch für unsere nächsten Kandidaten. Das ist einer mit dem größten Grinsen im Gesicht und mit ganz, ganz viel Potenzial. Herzlich Willkommen, Manuel Haumer! 2022 den achten Platz geholt, 2021, den schauen wir mal, wie es ihm heute ergeht. Und damit sind wir auch schon bei unserem sechsten Athleten. Ich ersuche um einen tosenden, nicht enden wollenden Applaus für Günther Dallinger! Einen vierten Platz hat er geholt 2019 bei den Staatsmeisterschaften und auch er will jetzt endlich mal hier 
auf Stockerl. Warum nicht in Seefeld bei dieser wunderbaren Kulisse? Und unser nächster Athlet, auch da darf es jetzt nochmal richtig laut werden. Der hat äh, bei den National Championships, also bei den österreichischen Staatsmeistern, einen dritten Platz geholt, 2016. Und beim französischen Cup einen zweiten Platz geholt. Ist schon ein bisschen her, aber nichtsdestotrotz, er ist on fire. Hier ist Matthias Hinterreiter. Schwebt hier förmlich über die Bühne, da gibt es das Shake Hands mit den Kollegen und damit sind wir auch schon beim achten Athleten. Das ist ein Mann, der weiß, wie es ist, hier zu gewinnen bei österreichischen Staatsmeisterschaften. Hat sie nämlich 2012 und 2019 für sich entschieden. Wir freuen uns, dass er heute wieder hier ist. Herzlich Willkommen, Josef Leier! Dieser Mann ist alles zuzutrauen. Und wir sind ganz gespannt, was er 2023 zu zeigen hat. Aber jetzt, jetzt darf es auch wieder so richtig laut werden. Hier kommt Hermann, der Herminator Heiligen Brunner. Ein Naturereignis dieser Mann. Zweimal ein dritter Platz bei den österreichischen Meisterschaften. Einmal Silber geholt und das war 2018. Also der weiß, wie es sich anfühlt, am Stocker zu stehen. Und da weiß man auch, der Stockerl, das muss sehr stabil sein, wenn dieser Mann hier draufsteht. Also das ist wirklich einer, auf den man achten muss, der ganz, ganz viel Kraft mitgebracht hat und den einen Mann auch fest in die Augen geschaut hat, den wir jetzt heraufholen. Das ist der Mann, den es zu schlagen gibt. Der ist auch international, ein absoluter Big Player. Dreimal gab es einen zweiten Platz bei der European Trophy für ihn. Einmal hat er Silber geholt beim Four Nations Cup und er ist achtfacher österreichischer Meister und der Titelverteidiger. Hier kommt Armin Kugler! Das sind sie, unsere zehn Athleten, die hier bei den Steel Timbersports Austrian Pro Championships um die Punkte kämpfen. Sie wollen österreichischer Staatsmeister werden und ich ersuche noch einmal um einen Riesenapplaus für unsere zehn Athleten und unsere Judges. Ladies and Gentlemen, let's the games begin! Ja, und damit gab ich dann auch gleich wieder zu Guido Hüsken geben. Der sitzt nämlich schon im Studio und ist bereit, das Ganze für euch am Livestream zu kommentieren. Und ich bleibe noch ein bisschen bei euch, gehe jetzt gemeinsam mit unseren Athleten, weil ich mich dann auch gleich ein bisschen stärker und größer so, und mächtiger Floti, fühle hier von der Bühne. Und danke für die Übergabe, danke lieber Floti. Jetzt also, wenn die an der Bushaltestelle stehen und gemeinsam einsteigen und der Busfahrer kommt da glaube ich mächtig ins Schwitzen, hoffentlich sitzen die nicht alle auf einer Seite, dann äh, fährt der krumm. Also, wir versuchen da jetzt gleich dann auch viele, viele Details zu erklären, wenn es gleich losgeht. Wir fangen an mit einem Detail und das ist, wie ermitteln wir denn überhaupt den Gewinner heute? So, also da ist äh, im Moment gibt es Tonschwierigkeiten. Wir erklären es dann nochmal. Vielleicht kannst du das machen. Du bist ja der große Experte. Folgendes. Die Athleten treten hier heute in drei Runden an. In Runde 1 haben wir den Underhand-Job, Stocks und Standing Block, wo die Athleten die Punkte 1 bis 10 bekommen oder 10 bis 1, wie man ziehen will. Danach kommt die Runde 2 mit Single Buck und Springboard. Dort gibt es aber doppelte Punkte. Das heißt, es sind immer auch zwei Punkte Unterschied zwischen Sportler 1 und Sportler 2. Und dann Runde 3 ist die finale Runde, die Hotzo, wo dann die Punkte verdreifacht werden. Das heißt, vor der Hotzo ist nichts entschieden und in der Hotzo geht es um alles oder nichts. Hotzo ist Hotzo, so heißt es immer wieder. Overall Ranking wird entsprechend nach den Punkten geordnet. Für die Zeit gibt es entsprechende Punkte. Ganz wichtig vielleicht nochmal zu unterstreichen, es geht also jetzt nicht Mann gegen Mann sondern die Zeit wird in Punkte umgerechnet. Der Erste kriegt zehn Punkte, der Zehnte dann noch einen Punkt. Es sei denn, es gibt eine Disqualifikation, eine DQ. Genau, Disqualifikation will natürlich kein Sportler erleben. Das ist die Nightmare, das, was sich keiner wünscht. Dann gehst du nämlich mit null Punkten nach Hause und es ist nicht lustig, denn 
Es ist sehr schwer, mit einem Nuller noch irgendwo nach vorne zu kommen bei so einer Konkurrenz. Heißt also, in allen sechs Disziplinen muss man performen. Man darf sich keinen Ausraster leisten, wenn man hier österreichischer Meister werden möchte, die Staatsmeisterschaft holen. Und es geht ja nicht nur darum, sondern es geht ja auch um die Qualifikation als Einzelathlet für die Weltmeisterschaft. Es ist also eine doppelte Spannung auch irgendwie da. Natürlich, die, die Punkte oder die Zeiten des österreichischen Meisters kommen in ein europäisches Ranking und die acht Besten von diesem europäischen Ranking dürfen dann zur WM fahren. Dort kommen dann noch die vier Überseenationen dazu und dann haben wir die besten zwölf Sportler der Welt bei der Weltmeisterschaft. Und die zehn Athleten, so sind sie aufgelistet in den Heats 1, 2, 3, 4 und 5. Ein Favorit, ja, der ist im Prinzip relativ schnell ausgemacht mit Armin Kugler. Das ist äh, sicherlich der mehrfache Staatsmeister, der Mann, der hier zu schlagen ist heute. Den jagen sie alle. Wen hast du denn dahinter so auf der Liste? Dahinter auf der Liste ist schwer zu sagen. Ich bin heute extrem gespannt auf den Peror Christian. Den habe ich letztes Jahr noch bei den Pros gehabt als Gegner, ein echten harter Hund, der wird heute den Pros einheizen und natürlich auch der Maurer Hansi, der jetzt nach zwei, zwei Jahren Verletzungspause wieder zurück ist und alles zeigen will, was er kann. Und jetzt gucken wir uns an, was denn die erste Disziplin so ausmacht, den Underhand Job. Bei der anderen wird eine Spezialaxt verwendet, die du definitiv nicht im Baumarkt kaufen kannst. Wir Sportler beziehen sie meistens aus Neuseeland, Australien oder Amerika. Die Axt ist geschliffen auf 13 bis 14 Grad. 800 Euro für eine dieser Axen, also sie sind sehr, sehr scharf und sehr, sehr expensiv. There are many different versions of blade shapes that are used in these axes, so it'll be up to the athletes too to figure out which ones to use during the underhand chop. Now, the underhand chop is a discipline that simulates cutting through a fall tree, and the, the rules of the game here are that the block must be cut through from both sides. Um, an athlete will be disqualified if they don't split the block completely or if they cut into the footholds as a manner of safety. And now we have our fir first seat ready to go with Christian Peraua and Manuel Heumer coming up on the stage. Heumer. So you can see the uh, world record and national records right there in front of you. Uh, the world record by this uh, particular discipline, the underhand chop, is held still by Braden Meyer, who had an incredible 12.01 at the Australian Pro Championship in 2022. And the man is an absolute beast when it comes to the underhand chop. Will somebody today be able to break that world record? That will be a very difficult challenge as we get ready to go with heat number one, discipline number one, round number one. Here we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one. Nice even start by both of these guys as they are kind of in sync for the first three, four drivers. And you can see there, Power getting some nice big chips out of his block. Precise hits there, not too steppy. And he should go over to the other side fairly soon. Manuel Heumer already on the other side. A step down by Power is going to kill some of his time off as Heumer definitely has the advantage as he's got a nice big open face on the second side facing the audience here. And they are enjoying it. The heat is there. And oh, wow, fantastic time by Hoima. 30.17. That's a personal best for the big man, Per Hour. Struggling on the second side. He's got some leftover material there. A little axe skip for him on that one as he tries his best to get through there. And he really has his work cut out for him. He didn't cut through deep enough on the first side. And now he's going to get through it with a nice swing through. And uh, a 48.10 for the first timer in the pro championship here. So uh, he's got himself a personal best that he can work off of now. So a great set of cuts by both of these guys. Manuel and Dr. Jürgen Kurzenberger gives us the thumbs up for both of them. Both cuts are good. So a quick clean up there on stage to make some uh, space for our next two athletes as we take a quick look back here. And you can see here, those are the uh, initial cuts on the first side from power. 
A little bit steppy. On the other hand, though, Hoima's got some really nice, clean faces. Good chips coming out of there. A fantastic transition there by Power. However, he did step down and he didn't have the balance. So this is a very important rule here. He made sure not to swing that axe when he had his foot on the floor. Because uh, if you do, that counts as a DQ. Meanwhile, Manuel really enjoying that one. He was pretty stoked by a very good personal best of 29.68. And he has set the time to beat in the underhand chop. As we have two more guys coming out onto the stage. Johannes Maurer and Josef Laya. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! So Josef Laya knows what it is to be the national champion, and he wants to have that top of the podium back. He still works hard. He's still absolutely relevant. Very, very fit man. And he's got the greatest mustache when he's on his game in the timber sports, I have to be honest there. He's got a really wide open face on the first side here. A couple of straight in cuts though, which is something that they don't want to have. And uh, moving over to the other side, Joseph is already working that second side. And so is Johannes Maurer. Big chips flying out for Maurer. He's got a very accurate set of cuts there. You can see he's really clean and he should be through fairly soon now. Joseph Lyer got a couple of steps in there as he's trying to find his way through that block. Still got some material on the backside that he's got to cut through as well. Maybe he left a little too much back there, but it looks like it's wiggling and waggling and Joseph Maurer gets through in 51.68. Johannes Maurer, excuse me, Joseph Laya, still trying to get through that second side. You can see there's a lot of material still there. And it could be that he saw that uh, Johannes Maurer moved over to the other side of his block before him, and he wasn't ready to get over to the other side. And now he's really struggling, and it's going to be a tough one. Oh, but he's got it through in 117.07. That is quite a slow time for Josef Laya. And I think that was mostly by virtue of having not cut through one or two extra hits on the first side of his block.
the disqualification. So unfortunately for Matthias Hinterreiter, that's a DQ. He will not receive any points. But that is unfortunately for him a disqualification. So Hinterreiter will have a DQ here and zero points for underhand chop. All right, so one more heat to go, and that is with uh, Gunther Dallinger and Armin Kugler. That means it's a quick transition for our guys on stage. And we will get back up there for one more heat here before we get the results from the underhand chop and move on to our next discipline, the stock saw. So our, our German moderators are struggling in the temperature out there. I can completely sympathize with them sitting here in the box with the sun shining through the easier inside or outside. It's a very warm day here in the beautiful Tyrolean Alps in Seefeld. Fantastic location for family and adventure. And there's tons of stuff to do here. But right now, we're concentrating on the next heat. And that is the underhand chop final heat here between Gunther Dallinger and Armin Kugler. There you see, fourth place at the National Pros in 2019, Gunther Dallinger. He's a big man. He's got plenty of power. But the question is, can he take down Armin Kugler? Armin Kugler's best time is 19 seconds 12. So 19 12 is a fantastic time. And he has been so consistent over the years, it's amazing. Three, two, one. Remaining and now finally breaks through in a 43 41. So that was a good run from Armin Kugler. And Armin's not a dumb guy. He saw that the times by the other guys were close to the 30 second mark or over. And he knows that he can cut under 20. So he took it easy on that one. He didn't really push hard. He made sure that he's going to save some of that energy. Times are locked in for both of those guys. 25-21 is the fastest time of the day, and we'll take a look back at the slow mos here for this last discipline and uh, heat really quickly. Again, just a reminder, folks, the uh, ultimate competition that we'll see on stage is not the only information.
both cuts are good. Johannes Mauer with a 14.66. I expected much more from him on that one. I've seen him uh, cut very, very much quicker in the past, so uh, he's probably a bit disappointed by that himself. That was a beautiful start by Manuel Hoimer, though. He just got right up on that saw. First cut, it was a fairly good-sized cookie. I've seen thinner, uh, but that wasn't super thick. Now, the second cookie by him was pretty well targeted, well aimed. Johannes Maurer had a pretty fat second cookie there. We'll watch this one drop. He had to really struggle to get through there. And the, the rule of thumb is thin to win because the thinner the cookie is, the less drag on the chain there is. However, you do risk a cutout with a thin cookie. And you can see here a little bit of a struggle on that big fat cookie for Johannes Maurer. But Manuel Hoimer with an 11.73 is the time to beat. And that's another personal best for Manuel as we go on stage now with Josef Laia and Matthias Hinterreiter. Both of them by the tail of the tape pretty evenly matched up in Stocksaw. Stand go. to your timber. Two, three, two, Flyer, two Matthias, one, go! Good even start by both of these guys. I don't know if that's Laia or Hinterreiter, but that first cookie is massive. Oh, we got a cut out there by Hinterreiter, I believe. So he's got to cut a second cookie. Josef Laia, he's got a pretty thin bottom half of one of those cookies. So it could be close to a cutout. We'll have to see if Josef's cookies are both complete. It was um, good that uh, Hinterreiter saw that uh, cutout at the start of the upcut and repositioned the saw. He will have a complete cookie there, but it will mean that his time is slower than expected. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, official times locked in 15.94 for Hinterreiter, 13.25. For Josef Laia, that puts him in second place behind Manuel Hoimer in Stocksa so far. Really nice, even start by both of the guys. You can see on the left hand side, Josef Laia. And there is the first cookie by Johanna, uh, by uh, Matthias Hinterreiter. You can see it's a very, very thick cookie. For Laia and the second cookie he's got to be careful and there's the cutout and he noticed it which is a good thing moved over a few centimeters he still had some space so the first cookie by Hinterreiter was actually very nice it was a good thin cookie the first cookie by Josef Laia was a monster though so that didn't leave him a lot of room to make any corrections but he didn't have to he had a good clean second cut on the upcut all right next up Christian Power our brand new pro He'll have a best time no matter what, unless, of course, a DQ comes his way, which we hope nothing will happen of the sort. Uh, don't want to jinx him either, though. So Christian Perauer and Gunther Dallinger, excuse me, in heat number three here. All right, warm up your soul. Effie, ready! Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Christian Parra with a really low stance. Dahlinger standing up a little bit higher. But Dahlinger's cookie, that first cookie is beautifully thin. Wow, what a fantastic transition by Dahlinger to get into that second cut. Leaning into it properly as he gets a 13.08. And Parauer with a 14.17 personal best. Wow, look at the angle on that second cut, though. Wow, that is madness. And he did have a tap in there, which could cost him 
and give him a DQ. Let's see. Okay, stand A, DQ, cut the line. Stand uh, B, your cut is good. That is too bad. So that means Christian Power has a DQ because he cut the line. His transition was quick, but uh, he jumped over in the transition a bit too far, realized it, but it was too late by that point he had, because he had cut the line. And we'll take a look at this here. So the beginning was beautiful there for Gunther Dahlinger. That is just about the perfect first cookie. A quick pickup, got right into it, was very clean and fast on the first cut there. And watch this transition by him. Bang, into the second cut, really, really nice. If we could take a look over at Christian Power, second cut, uh, we didn't see the transition and he's got quite a steep angle on his up cut, so that's going to uh, you know, reduce some of the power. But the cookie was nice and thin, so that's one thing that you can say in his favor. All right, next up, Peter Rich going up against Hermann Heiligebrunner. Hermann, very good with the uh, stock saw in hand with a 1060 as his personal best, not too far off the world record. That world record, by the way, still held by Ole Magnus Berget from Norway at 8.51. Him and Heilige Brunner getting ready there. You can see All those right. blue lines well, marked on the block. The so. outside line, the closest one to the middle stand that's holding the block in place is the inside marker for how far they can go in. If they cut that line or cut over the line, that is their DQ. And you can see right there, Christian, or uh, excuse me, Peter Rich doing Happy. a couple of test lifts ready. to make sure that he's got stand exactly everything your as planned. Three, two, one, go! Nice start by both of these guys. Peter Rich, Heilige Brunner. Coming to the bottom of their cuts pretty even. A little bit of a hook, hiccup there by Peter Rich as he repositions, but he's got a quick second cookie. Heilige Brunner, excuse me. Hiccup is, uh, got two cookies on the deck, but the time was a bit slower than expected from him in 1691. And a good time by Peter Rich, though, a 12.34 after adjustment. Well, that will put him up into second place with Heile Gebrunner sitting in seventh with the 16.71, if all things stand equal. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, so there you have it. Official times locked in. Peter Rich with a great time. Second place for him in the discipline. Just behind Manuel Hoima, who still holds the top time with one more heat to go. Heat number five between Stefan Penka and Armin Kugler. It was a really, really nice start by Peter Rich, though. And you could see he kept the uh, saw in position, the motor of the saw, but just moved the blade through nice and clean. Perhaps here, a little bit too much pressure by Heilige Brunner. Transition was really nice, although a little bit close to the line by Peter Rich. Luckily, he didn't go over the line, as we saw, because we do have a... Both cuts are good mark, and uh, there you can see the angle on Heilige Brunner's second cut. So this really is about uh, your timing, the feel for the saw, and your precision with the saw as well. Okay, last heat in stock saw, heat number five, and there you see the world record of the national record, 10.33. Held by that man on the right-hand side of your screen, Armin Kugler, going up against Stefan Penker and 11.09, personal best for him. So he's not far off the mark either. All right. Warm up your soul. Armin Kugler not messing around. It's very much about routine for him, making sure everything exactly where Effie. he needs it to be as ready. we get ready to go for the Stand final heat in to stock your saw. Timber. Three, two, one, go! Bit of a quicker start by Penka, who's got a nice cookie to start things off with. Bit of an angle on Kugler's cookie there, but Kugler's transition is fantastic. Penker. Fighting through that upcut, Kugler and Penker are going to come through almost at the same time. Look at that, 12.99 to 13.03. That was about as even as it gets, folks. Great heat between these two guys. Two cookies on the deck for both of them, and it looks like we are clean across the board. 
Okay, both guns are good. All right, so Stefan Pinka with a very nice 1281 sits in third place. Armin Kugler, surprisingly enough, is down in fifth place here. And Manuel Hoima has had himself a day with two personal bests and a fantastic position in the underhand chop. And now the top of the board in the stock saw. We'll take a look at these slow-mos, go to the results from stock saw and see how that affects the overall. That was a beautiful first cookie there by Stefan Penker, by the way. It was very, very thin. Second cookie was slightly bigger. And there was the second cookie from Armin Kugler. A bit of a bigger cookie there. But you know what? He'll take it. And he's got some points on the board. He doesn't look too bent out of shape about the situation. He's been around the block enough times to know where he stands. All right. Stock saw results. There you have it. Manuel Heimer with that personal best. And that's a, a good start to the day for him. Hopefully he can keep that flow going. Peter Rich in second place, Stefan Penka in third, Gunther Dallinger fourth, rounding out the top five is the reigning Austrian champion, Armin Kugler. Let's see how it looks overall. Manuel Hoima, after two disciplines, is in the lead in the overall standings, just three points ahead of Armin Kugler. Gunther Dallinger, two points back of Armin Kugler with 18, tied with Stefan Penka who is sitting in fourth place, and Gunther Dallinger, excuse me, Armin Kugler, excuse me, uh, Stefan Penka is down there in fourth place, and fifth place is Peter Rich with 16 points. So still plenty of time and uh, all to play for, as they say, um, as we are going to move on to the next discipline, the standing block chop. So uh, he just said that the stock saw is not his best discipline and uh, that he's going to focus on getting through the remaining disciplines uh, as well as he can. So most of the guys that are competing here are coming from uh, one of two clubs and they all hang together, train together. So it's all about just being together and training together and, and improving together. So uh, it's good. So he's going to give it his all for the rest of the competition here today. So Armin Kugler currently sitting in fifth place in the overall standings. Uh, excuse me, I lie to you. He, uh, he's in second place uh, in the overall standings as we go on to our next discipline and the discipline description standing block chop. All right, standing block chop is the uh, discipline that simulates chopping down a tree. And again, the athletes have to cut through the block from both sides. So you'll see them cut through on the first side and transition to the second side. Important here is to keep a good control of your axe and try and cut through as cleanly as possible in the fastest time possible. All right, so here we have our uh, standing block chop heat list. Christian Per Auer, Manuel Heumer, heat one. Josef Maurer, Peter Rich, heat two. Stefan Penke, Josef Leier, heat three. Heilige Brunner, Hinterreiter, heat four. And Dallinger Kugler in heat number five. 
Personal best for Manuel Heimer, 45.82, and the way things have been going for him today, could we have another personal best? I'm crossing my fingers for him. He's been looking fantastic today, and Christian Perauer, no matter what, will take home a personal best, getting through that block as quickly as possible. And you can also see the nails uh, at the top of the block wrapped around the top side. They are there in order to prevent a major chipping or slabbing. Um, and that keeps it fair so that not a ton of material comes out of the first couple of hits to make it easier for the athletes who did slab out something there. And you can see Manuel Hoimer getting ready and posi right. positioning himself Effie. for the first set of ready. cuts. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Two drivers from the bottom, two into the top, and they'll start get going to try and get the big chips out. Power looking very good. He's got some nice big chips. He's gotten deep on that first side. He's got to extend that axe out a little bit, get a bit farther onto the uh, other side of his first cut, and he has moved over to the other side first. Manuel Hoimer now passing the 25 second mark as Per Auer is working the second side of his block. And as per his diagram, he's keeping it pretty clean and pretty tight. Hoima going deep on the first side, or maybe not as deep as he should have. And a little bit of steps there by Per Auer as he is almost through on the second side. Five or six more drivers should do it for him, but both of these guys have left quite a lot of material through on that first side. But Per Auer with a 4708 personal best and Manuel Hoimer struggling on that second side so we will not see a PB in this one as he is trying to get through there and uh, didn't go as deep as probably he should have on that first side and he's trying to find that line through to get it done and dust it gets a bit more material out of the way we should be through in a couple more drivers and here we go this is going to do it for him 114.86 and he is disappointed by that time because he absolutely knows he can do better than that. Let's not forget when you're on stage, folks, the adrenaline is pumping and it's after you've done two disciplines already. So you're going to be a bit tired. You got to manage your breath and manage your uh, power output here. So we do have two good cuts, but Christian Perauer with a 46.80 as the time to beat at the moment in heat number one, as the crew will clean up there and we'll take a quick look back at the slow-mo here. Very nice start by Perauer. Really good drivers, really good action from the hips. There you can see he starts stepping a little bit there. I like to call it salad, uh, but he got some nice chips out. Manuel Poema, actually, he had a couple of good big chips come out early on, but it took him about five or six drivers to get those big chips out. There was some stuff in the way. There's that final hit from Per Auer. And Manuel Hoima, he had a, a rough second side on his block. Now, it could be that there was not there. We didn't get a picture of the backside of his block, but it took him a lot longer to get through there than planned, obviously. All right, standing block heat number two, Johannes Maurer up against Peter Rich. And for a diminutive fella, Johannes Maurer has got some power. All right. Effie, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! And right away, Maurer gets into it, trying to throw everything he's got into that block. You can see he too has some chips waiting to come off. Finally, they start to fly. Peter Rich, meanwhile, has got some good accuracy there as uh, he's getting some nice chips out. And uh, we have some of our signage falling down over there. A little bit of wind picking up. Giannis Maurer moving on to the second side of his block. Peter Rich now moving over to the second side about 
Six drivers back of Johannes as Johannes is passing the 35 second mark on the second side here. Peter Rich getting into it. Maura just powering through as much as he can. He sees it, but it's not quite there yet. And I guess he felt like he could get to the other side sooner. It's wiggling and waggling, and there it goes finally when 51-73 by Johannes Maurer. Peter Rich almost there with his as well, and he takes it with him for a spin. 57-64 for Peter Rich. So Peter Rich in third place there, Johannes Maurer in second place, and Christian Per Auer with his personal best still atop the ranking in standing block chop. Okay, both guys are good. You can see the intensity on both of these guys as they're really going hard at this standing block chop. There you see Johannes moving over to the other side of his block. And Peter Rich took him a little bit longer to get to the other side of his block, but uh, he wasn't that much slower than Johannes. 51-54 uh, for Johannes after adjustment and Peter Rich with a 57-25 as he took the top part of his block for a ride. All right, now it seems like we're going to head over to Floaty again for another interview. Uh, don't know who with this time will be informed about that, or maybe it'll just be a surprise for us. Who knows? Let's find out. Yeah, great, in the middle, sticking with it, and perfect. So he says the rookies, uh, it's uh, crazy what kind of talent's coming through, so uh, that's pushing the pros. So you brought the, the, rain, the rain jacket with, but doesn't need it anymore with the weather today. So Johannes Maurer going to head backstage and get ready for the next set of uh, disciplines coming up later on. Whether he'll be there or not remains to be seen, but uh, we still have a few more heats to go first before we move on. And that is going to be heat number three with Stefan Penka and Josef Laia coming up shortly. <laughs> the guys are dealing with that heat uh, out there. I, I sympathize, been there before. It is very warm. And when you're standing there on that stage outside in the studio uh, in the open air, it is incredibly warm as we are ready for our next heat on stage. We're going to head up there and check out the heat number three between Stefan Penka and Josef Laia. And Josef loves beef, clearly. <laughs> So you can see the tail of the tape definitely gives the advantage to Josef Lyer with a 27.92 personal best. Stefan Pinker has a bit of work cut out for him if he wants to catch up to that time. His personal best, 42.40. But you have to know these guys have all been training and making sure that they are on point. But because wood is a natural product, you never know how it's going to react. So sometimes you might... Uh, get a piece that's not cutting as well as you would like, or, you know, sometimes you get, as Yolanda Gnadinger likes to call it, a melon that you can just cut through quickly. It's a little bit of discussion about uh, position on stage at the moment, and just making sure that there is room for these guys to swing their axes here. Okay, looks good. Now we can go. 
All right. Effie, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Nice start by both guys. Joseph Lai are getting some good chips right away, and Penka starts to chip out as well. Here it's about the accuracy, making sure those angles are right just to be able to get those pieces out. When the guys start getting tired, they start cutting in flat, though, and that's what you're seeing Joseph Lyer do right there. A couple of flat hits as he switches over to the other side, leaving a lot of material on that first side. Penka might have made the mistake of following him around as well, as uh, he didn't really get too deep on the first side from my view here. And Josef Laya looking to get through there fairly quickly now. And he's done it in 37.05, a surprising time. Side and Stefan Pinker gets through in a 43-32. So not quite his personal best, but pretty close at uh, 43-32. And uh, that will be adjusted to 42-17. And Joseph Lyer with a 36-62. Okay, both guys are good. So Joseph Lyer with the 36-62 will take over the top spots in the standing block chop. Good time for him. Stefan Penker with a 43-17 has the second place. Both of these guys. Actually, I would say pushing each other on stage. For me, Stefan Pinker and uh, Josef, not exactly evenly matched up there. That could have been an ugly slip up for the axe, and it happened actually again afterwards by Josef. You could see that axe just dinged off the, the block there. You could see those bottom cuts are really nice from Stefan Pinker. And here's that final driver from Josef Laya. A couple more drivers for Stefan Pinker there as well. And he gets through it with a final push through. Fantastic. Good job by both of these guys. All right. Him and Heilige Brunner and Matthias Hinterreiter coming up onto stage here. Herman, fairly intense. Interreiter. All right. Looking a Effie. bit nervous in this one here. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. There you see Herman Heiligebrunner, big power drivers. Matthias Hinterreiter, a couple of flat cuts there. Looks better from down below. The cuts are not so deep on that first side as he switches over to the second side. Heilige Brunner over to the other side, about three strokes behind Hinterreiter now. A bit of a high hit there by Heilige Brunner as he gets back into his marked spots. Hinterreiter looking good to get through there fairly soon. And he does in 41.03. Herman just passing the 49 second mark here as he's batting some material out of the way. He's got it uh, a little bit of trouble on that second side here. And there you go, 101.76 for Herman Heiligebrunner. All right, so waiting for the final call from Dr. Jörg Kurzenberger. Okay, both cuts are good. And you hear that whistle in the background that gives the uh, stage crew the indication that it is safe to come up on stage and uh, get their work done. We'll take a look back here at the heat between Herman and Matthias. You can see Matthias on the right-hand side of your screen there. 
We uh, saw him go fairly nice and deep into that first side. A bit of a high hit there by Herman on that uh, first side. But didn't seem to affect him too much. And um, based on what I've learned in the last little while, you know, a little bit deeper on that first side isn't going to hurt you if you take one or two extra drivers there before going over to the other side. You can't play the game based on what the guy on the other side of the stage is doing. You have to play your game. And there you see Matthias with that nice final driver. And Herman struggled with a few extra drivers on that second side, but did finally do it in a 101.57. That puts him in seventh place in the standing block chop results with uh, Matthias in, uh, where is he? Number two with a 40.82. So a very nice result for Matthias Interreiter, Josef Leier, still on top of the standing block results in uh, first place. He's got the 12 points for the moment, but there is one more heat still to go, and that's between Gunther Dallinger and Armin Kugler. So bottom right-hand side of your screen, you can see the live ranking, and uh, that's the overall, by the way. Stefan Penker atop the live overall rankings here with uh, Manuel Heumer and Josef Leier in the top three. And it uh, looks like we're going to go back up to the main stage for our final heat in the standing block chop. Now, folks, let's not forget, we are on the third discipline, and that means this is the final heat of round one, and we will lose the bottom two athletes after this heat is done. So we'll see when we get our overall standings, who is going to be moving on to rounds number two to compete in single buck and springboard. And there we see Gunther Dallinger and Armin Kugler on stage. Gunther Dallinger focused. Armin Kugler looks like he's got a banana blade there or a half banana perhaps. All right. See by that moon shape on the edge of the blade. Stand to your timber. Each athlete has to decide which blade shape is best for them and they often come with eight different axes. So here we go, Armin Kugler. Right away, he's got pace. Gunther Dallinger right there with him though. Pace means that he is driving that ax more with a little bit less power. There you see Armin on that second side. Not quite at 20 seconds as uh, both of these guys looking really good, but it should be a quick piece of work for Armin Kugler as he's struggling on that last one, does it? 26.91, the first guy under 30 seconds and Gunther Dallinger just over 30 seconds at 33.7. So they will take the first two positions respectively in the standing block chop with Armin Kugler atop the standing rankings. Gunther Dallinger, then Josef Leier, one, two, and three. All right, welcome. Oh, good. Yeah. So Armin Kugler, again, consistency, quality. The man is always dependable when it comes to staying among the top. And you can see right away, even in slow-mo, you can see how quickly he is moving that axe into the wood. Gunther Dallinger, same thing. The skill and the power and the accuracy of these guys is just absolutely unmatched. It's amazing. Move over to the top chop here, and he'll put a little bit extra length in it, coming over to the far side of the block to get those chips out, and then moves that ax out, moves around to the other side, and uh, gets going on the second side. Gutta Dallinger was not that far behind, maybe a half stroke to a stroke behind as they went to the second side, keeping that power up and that pressure up. And it was a really nice final couple of drivers here. Armin thought he had it about two hits ago, and then he saw that top lock starting to wiggle and waggle. And it was uh, real close, and it was about four strokes away before Gunther Dallinger joined him there. But both of them, good times. They'll take it. So here we look at the standing block chop results here and how it works into round one. We'll take a quick look at how that switches things around in the overall standings. And that means 
we are going to lose Matthias Hinterreiter and Christian Perauer. They are out of the competition for the remainder of the day. Our top eight athletes, Armin Kugler, Gunther Dallinger, Stefan Penke, Manuel Heumer, Josef Leier, Peter Rich, Her Hermann Heiligebrunner, and Johannes Maurer will be moving on to round two, and they will compete first in the single buck. And people are uh, lining the hills around the area here to get a nice overview of the whole space, kind of staying in the shade to uh, avoid getting heat stroke. It is so hot here today. Uh, you wouldn't think it because the temperature is only around 25, 26 degrees, but these high altitude temperatures can really be tricky. It burns quickly. All right, let's take a look at the single buck tool and discipline. So the single buck saw is a two meter long cross cut saw with 10 centimeter long cutting and raking teeth. Uh, these are incredibly precise. They're laser cut and sharpened by hand. And that means when used correctly, it's otherwise known as the misery whip and the athlete will have to cut through a block with one cookie and uh, any breakage of the cookie will result in a disqualification if the cookie is not complete on the deck. More on that if the situation arises. And you can see here, the best in the world will have that thing flowing nice and clean. And uh, in this particular picture with Alrin Uben, uh, she was with assistance, but the majority of these athletes will be cutting without assistance. So there we see four heats with Johannes Maurer, Hermann Heiligebrunner, and then we have Peter Rich going up against Josef Leier, Manuel Heumer, Stefan Penker, Gunther Dallinger, and Armin Kugler. Armin Kugler, very, very strong in this discipline. All right, Johannes Maurer going up against Hermann Heiligebrunner. And that is a very nice time by... Hermann Heiligebrunner, 1727. He's not that far off of the national best. So uh, there is a possibility for him to uh, do some damage today using his size and his height and his power. But it's not just about jamming that saw into the wood. You have to keep the flow going. You have to keep the saw moving. And when that saw stops mid-cut, having to restart it, can sometimes be a real wrestling match, and that is one of the reasons why they call this the misery whip. You push too hard, hook it up, the whole saw can bend and bow, and uh, you might as well get out a uh, violin bow and start playing it at that point. There you can see right-hand side of your stage, Hermann Heiligebrunner. Johannes Maurer, quick setup, and... Uh, I can't tell if Johannes has spike shoes on or not, but I think I know that uh, Hammond definitely right. using the spike shoes, shot put shoes more often than Ready. not. Stand here we go. To your timber. Round two, first Three, discipline in round two, two single buck, and one, we're off. Go! Beautiful start by both of the guys. Heilige Brunner using the entire length of the saw. Maurer doing exactly the same thing. Ooh, a bit of a hookup there. Too much angle. That stopped him up, and he had to restart that saw, but he was quick about doing it. Heilige Brunner looking good, getting close to the bottom of his cut here. Maurer, another massive hookup as he's had trouble. Heilige Brunner, too much angle as well. And Hermann Heilige Brunner with a 20.87, and Johannes Maurer with a 24.63. He'll take that to the bank as a personal best. And now you can see one of the reasons why they call it the misery whip, and hopefully we'll see that in the slow mos. But both cuts are good with uh, Johannes Maurer taking a personal best home, and uh, that'll give him a place to work from for the future. And we'll take a look back at the replays here. So both of these guys are with a really excellent start. Heilige Brunner really getting that entire saw working early on. And that's what you like to see, digging that elbow in, stabilizing the saw, really pushing through, blowing out with each push through. And there, misery whip action right there. 
Johannes having the same problem. Let's take a look here as uh, he's starting to slow up mid cut here, but he kept the saw moving. He did have a couple of hookups. There's another big hookup from uh, Heilige Brunner, but he managed to just tip the saw a little bit and keep it moving. You can see how efficiently it does cut when it's moved cleanly through the block. They're so sharp. Those cutters and, and raker teeth, it's just unbelievable what you can do with these two meter long cross cut saws. Okay, next up, Peter Rich going up against Josef Laia. I uh, appreciate how Peter Rich set that saw up. He tipped it onto the ground with a steep angle to make sure his line was completely straight and then brought the saw up into, posi into position to set his cut line. Uh, that's an important aspect here because if the saw is uh, cutting at an angle or if it's not straight into the block, then you're cutting more material and that's something you don't want to do. You want to have the most efficient cut possible Josef Laia has his saw set. Now we'll see him lift the saw out of place. You uh, might see from time to time the athletes stick the saw in upside down and do a couple of strokes. That has uh, a double effect. One is to uh, clean out that uh, ridge, and the other is to just have a All couple right. of practice strokes in there Eddie, to see Eddie. how it feels. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! Oh, Peter Rich with a massive hookup right off the start there. That can also be a bit of a, a brain strain. Josef Lyer looking really good. Oh, I spoke too soon. I jinxed the poor man. He's looking good, though, as he comes towards the bottom of his cut using the entire length of the saw. Peter Rich a bit choppier on his cut, but he'll take that 2098 personal best. Josef Flyer with a 2136. So him and Heilige Brunner so far today is the fastest of our single Sawyers. Peter Rich with a 27-7 sitting in second place now and Josef Leier in third place and uh, both Peter Rich and Johannes Maurer have personal bests in this discipline so that's great for them, fantastic. Love to see that every time. Okay, both guys are good. And you can see the spiked shoes from your, uh, Josef Laia there. Uh, again, those are usually shot put or javelin shoes where the spikes go all the way to the heel and they're used to give the guys as much grip as you can possibly find on the floor up there because it can sometimes get slippery with all the sawdust and everything, even with the guys doing a great job on the pit crew to make sure that it gets really well cleaned up. All right, and you can see here that major misery whip action for Josef Laia as the saw just stopped mid-cut. Same thing for Peter Rich there. So these guys pretty evenly matched up in this particular moment. Uh, the, they're only about one second and change, not even apart. So uh, a good battle between these two. Peter Rich pretty pleased about that time, though he'll take it as we'll get ready for our next heat. It's Manuel Heuma against Stefan Penka. So in the first round, Manuel Heuma in the first two disciplines managed to get personal best. Not so great in the third discipline, the standing block chop, where he was well over a minute to get through that block. And uh, here's an opportunity for him to redeem himself after the standing block chop in a discipline that he should be quite solid at because he is a tall man. So you can see... Every effort is made to get the alignment perfect and make sure that it is completely straight as they start to set the first position of the saw. And you can see, just with a couple of small strokes, how quickly that saw gets into the wood there. Theoretically, and I haven't actually tried this myself, but theoretically, you could place a saw atop the wood and slide it back and forth with one hand and still cut through the wood. But that would be slow. And we're not about slow here. We're racing today. So we want to make sure that you get through it as quickly as possible. 
Da wische ich mich dann nicht ein, das muss jeder für sich wissen. So Manuel Hammer mit, uh, with, uh, <laughs> just jumped into German there. Uh, Manuel Hammer has himself a brand new single box. So I've just been informed. All right. Empty. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Very nice start by Manuel and Penka, both of them. Getting in there clean. Manuel Heumer with a very good flow, though. Stefan Pinker looking good. Fighting it a little bit, though. Manuel Heumer's got a very smooth style as he's coming towards the bottom of that cut. And I think that's going to be a personal best it is. That's a good run for Manuel Heumer. 17.63 for him. A personal best. A bit of a sticky finish for Stefan Pinker at 24.08. Just had a sticky wicket at the bottom of his cut, but it's a clean cookie by the looks of it. And that new saw for Manuel Heumer is performing very nicely. So that is a fantastic day so far for Manuel Heimer from four disciplines, three personal bests, and the fastest time in the single box so far. So he is in the lead in the single box, and that does put him in the lead in the overall for the moment. But we still do have one more heat to go, and that's with Gunther Dahlinger going up against Armin Kugler. You can see here Manuel just had great flow. I mean, it was a beautiful thing to watch. He had nice flow. The saw wasn't rocking around a lot uh, with Stefan Penka here. You did see a little bit of rocking motion, and that's something that you want to try and avoid. I learned the hard way that way. Um, and uh, that just keeping the saw going through the wood with a beautiful final cut there for Manuel. And that was a lovely single saw for him. Very good job. And there you can see uh, a little bit of a hookup on the draw through for Stefan Penka. But nevertheless, he's got himself a 23.75, currently sitting in fifth place. And he's a couple of guys that could really do some damage to the overall standings here. Armin Kugler, Gunther Dahlinger, both of them well under 20 seconds in their single saw best times. So there you see the time that Armin Kugler would need to get in order to take the lead. It wouldn't be the fastest time of the day. It would put him in uh, fifth place, actually. But uh, it would still be enough for him to take over the top spot, which should be an easy, uh, as my son would say, easy clap for a man with as much experience and skill that he right. has. Empty. Ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! So Gunther Dahlinger struggling a little bit to get that nice flow. Armin Kugler, meanwhile, has got that saw moving tip to knuckles. Dahlinger finally got the flow as well. As Armin Kugler going to have a fantastic time of 15-14. And Gunther Dahlinger, whoa! He got a bit hooked up there, but he got a 20-18. That puts them one and three. So Armin Kugler in first place, Gunther Dahlinger in third place, Manuel Heume moves down into second place, and that means Armin Kugler takes over the top spot in the overall with Gunther Dahlinger right behind him in second place, and Manuel Heume rounding out the top three in third place. All right, that's all she wrote for single buck. And we will be moving on to our next discipline. So we are going to uh, take a quick look at the uh, slow-mos here from these two guys. And the slow-mos are faster than uh, any time that uh, any of the moderation team have cut on the single saw. <laughs> Unbelievable, look at that. So a bit of a struggle there by Gunther Dahlinger as uh, he kind of hopped the saw along. And meanwhile, Armin Kugler 
he got into it and he just kept going with nice clean flow and he had the rhythm and the rhythm was a dancer for him today so uh, he cut through clean in a time of 14.92 after adjustment and after it was made official so that was definitely enough and at the bottom you can see there a little bit of an angle on the cut so uh, Gunther Dahlinger struggled at the bottom but uh, he was also under 20 seconds when they readjusted the time so 19.88 was his official time so here come the single buck results with Kugler, Hoimer, and Dallinger at the top three there. Heilige Brunner in a good position in fourth place. Peter Rich, Josef Laia, Stefan Penka, and Johannes Maurer rounding out the top eight. And let's take a look at the overall. There you go, Kugler, Dallinger, Hoimer. Then Penka, Rich, Heilige Brunner, Laier, and Maurer in one through eight's position. So now it comes down to the discipline that is going to be a deciding factor for a lot of these guys and that is the springboard with two boards. Now, you could see in the background these tall tree sections being placed onto the stage, and uh, those are the springboard stands, they call them, and atop those stands will be placed a block where essentially the person is doing a standing block chop cut at the top of the, of, uh, the board, two meters up in the air. So it's an unbelievably tense discipline and we're going to go for a quick interview here now with Gunther Dahlinger. So short and sweet, basically what uh, Gunther Dahlinger said is you, uh, you got a love-hate relationship with the springboard, but if you do it a few times, it becomes fun to do, and it can be very interesting. The next question was if he uh, feels nervous about being two meters up with a, a razor-sharp uh, instrument in his hand, and it's like, you know, with enough practice, it's, it's not the issue. It's just about being confident and being up there, and uh, he's still in the running here, currently sitting in second place so there is a chance for him to uh, be up on top of the ranking with a good time in the springboard so um, the springboard is going to be a deciding factor for a lot of these guys uh, the big question is will any of them be able to make it in uh, under a minute uh, the next question is uh, are we going to see any DQs because of uh, going past <coughs> the allowed amount of time which is two minutes and 30 seconds it's a very difficult discipline because there's so many things going on. You have to be quick and accurate with your setting of the pockets, which we'll explain as the guys get into it. And I do believe we'll also have the uh, discipline uh, explanation here shortly where we'll give you a little bit of a lowdown on that as well. And you can see in the background, the athletes are responsible for setting their own blocks atop the stands. So this is... Uh, um, a thing that these athletes have to do because there are some personal touches for these blocks atop the stands that need to be taken care of by the athletes depending on where they're going to put their boards in and how they're going to chop when they're at the top because the stand itself has a larger diameter than the block that they're actually chopping. 
All right, so um, we talked a little bit about the European rankings off the top of the show, and um, we'll like, give you a bit of an explanation about how this works because the top eight athletes in the European rankings will be qualified to go to the World Championships in November. And we can see there it's not yet decided whether or not an Austrian athlete will be in there. Now, Alessandro Ciapponi and Gavin Thompson are in positions 9 and 10. For Bjorn Sonstebi is in a risky position right now because it's based on the fastest times by each of the athletes in the various disciplines throughout the season. So you see underhand chop, standing, uh, or stock saw, standing block chop, uh, single buck, springboard, and hot saw, and the amount of points that are accumulated throughout the season is based on times. So right now, Vibjorn Sonstebi is in the bubble position and could be pushed down by the winner of today's event here. But it's not guaranteed because it's about the times. Armin Kugler hasn't missed a world championship in the last five years, though. So the reality is Armin Kugler will probably be in the mix. And that means Vibjorn Sonstebi will be out of uh, the running to come to the world championships. All right, so the discussion continues about uh, how the European ranking uh, works uh, with our German commentators. And uh, the stage is uh, slowly getting prepared in the background there. I'm going to break out my yo-yo and go and do some shows for the people outside while things are prepared. Um, in the meantime, maybe uh, we can uh, look into, or uh, not quite sure if that's going to happen sooner or later, but uh, take a look at the discipline of springboard and what it's all about. Ah, first the coming competition, so so you can see there's a lot of video on demand for you guys. The Polish Pros, the European Trophy, the U.S. Pro Championships, the Nordics, and the Swiss Pro Championship, which just happened last week. Um, today, the Austrian Championships live right now. Hello, everybody. Um, tomorrow, the European Nations Rookie and Pro back-to-back. -back. That's uh, going to be via live stream. The German Pro Championships coming up uh, on the 1st of October. Um, and that will be also via live stream. And then on the 3rd and 4th of November, the Team World Championships and the Individual World Championships, respectively. We will be there for each of the following events over the next uh, two months. And we hope you will join us for all of those, especially for the World Championships in Stuttgart. It is going to be a gong show. The vibe and the excitement and uh, the, uh, the atmosphere is always one to enjoy and appreciate and uh, you will never really understand how crazy it is that uh, the, that that atmosphere at those events until you've actually lived it yourself so now back in 2016 at the world championships sterling hart absolutely destroyed the springboard world record with an incredible time of 35 uh, or 36 seconds. Recently, Walter Page in the United States at the U.S. Pro Championships beat that record and none of us thought that that record would fall ever again. It was so incredibly fast and hopefully we can get a quick look back at that particular record. All right, so here we see uh, Walter Page on the right-hand side of your screen setting up for the springboard. And uh, he's got a four-hit pocket right there. 
Digs in that board. It's got a beautiful first board, but that first board is really inconsequential as long as it holds. He's got a four-hit pocket on the second board. Doesn't do any house cleaning there. Gets up onto that second board, and he absolutely goes to work on that top block of Pine. And... Uh, uh, just passing the 22 second mark and he is absolutely working so quickly here and this is uh, going to be the new world record time of 35.43 an incredible feat by Walter Page and the previous world record holder Sterling Hart sent him a note and said hey congratulations buddy so there you go uh, that is the, the sportsmanship that we have here in Steel Timber Sports. And, of course, you have to know that Sterling Hart was a little bit heartbroken to see his world record fall. But the only thing that we can say about Walter Page is it was an incredible effort to get up there, climb up that tree, and basically bite a big chunk of wood out of that top block in 35.43 seconds. A great job by him. Big congratulations to Walt Page. And... Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing him with the American team at the World Championships, uh, battling away in the team competition. Um, in the meantime, we're just uh, waiting for the last bits and bobs to be set on stage, and hopefully we'll have the discipline explanation for you shortly. So springboard, it is the basically the setup of getting up onto a tree over top of limbs to cut the tree from on top. So what the athletes have to do is set a pocket and put in the springboard and then get up onto the second springboard and cut through the top block from both sides. And the fastest time obviously will get the best score. And there you can see our stage is set up for the springboard and our first athletes We'll be ready to go shortly here as uh, we take a quick look back there at the lineup of rookies that were competing earlier on today. And uh, the women competed in the morning, the rookies in the early afternoon. And now we are on to the pros in springboard as our first heat will go in just a second with Johannes Maurer and Hermann Heiligebrunner. Second heat will be Peter Rich against Josef Laia. Heat number three, Manuel Hoima against Stefan Penka. And heat number four, Gunther Dahlinger against Armin Kugler. Now here for me, this is a discipline that needs to be done perfectly. There is no messing around with this one. And you can see these personal bests are quite long. 2.30 is the time limit for these guys to get it done. And you would normally say, okay, the smaller, lighter athletes will have the better time in this discipline. But I have seen some incredible, incredible movements from the big boys, in particular him and Haile Gebrunner in this discipline. So it's about getting a quick, solid pocket, setting the board, not wasting any time, and getting up on top as quickly as possible. Here we go. Springboard, ladies right. and gentlemen. Anthony, the King's ready. Discipline. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go! That's an eight hit pocket there for Heiligebrunner. Johannes Maurer still working on the pocket. Heiligebrunner, he's got his board in. It's taken a bit of a bite there, but it looks to be sagging some. He's not going to worry too much about that first board. He wants to make sure that he gets that second board in good position. Johannes Maurer now up on his board to set that second pocket. Heiligebrunner still working on his second pocket. That second pocket is the critical pocket. You want to make sure that it is perfect and your board is in position and not risking slipping out or sagging down too much. Maurer doing a bit of house cleaning there and uh, Heiligebrunner doing the same thing as he sets his axe up top and Maurer gets his board in position and gets up and he's got a good board. Heiligebrunner also has a good board as he gets up on top there. It's bitten nicely so he can step back on the board if he feels confident enough. He can really put some action into it as we've just passed the one minute 10 second mark for both of these guys. 
And here is where the difficulty comes in. If you've got a good board, you can step back, you can use your body, you can use your legs and your hips to power through those drivers. If your board sags a bit, however, that means that you're going to have to step in closer to the stand choke up on the axe handle and you're not having as much power you're using your whole upper body only to drive into that block it's looking good for johannes mauras he's gotten deep on the first side heile gebrunner doing well to cut through on the first side there as well remember these guys have to cut through from both sides of the block mauras should split to the second side any second now as he's got a nice deep cut on the first side does he feel confident enough to be able to go to that second side yet? He wants to do a little bit more cutting through on the first side because that second side is the awkward cut. And here we go. Switches to the other side on the awkward angle. And two minutes, 10 seconds coming up close on him. And he's got it at 2.11.34. A personal best for Johannes Mauer. Great job. Heile Gebrunnen now has about 10 seconds left to get through. And he's in a bit of trouble of having a DQ as a timeout. And it looks like that's what's actually going to happen unless he can have that power driver. He's just, no, too close to the block. And unfortunately, he didn't have it, but he still wants to try and cut through. And they're going to let him do it. Good job to keep fighting through there for him and Heilige Brunner. But he has a DQ for time exceeded. Johannes Maurer, though, really pleased with that cut, and he should be. It's a very, 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 very difficult discipline to be efficient and good at. And it's incredibly tiring as well. As you can see, these guys are gutted. <laughs> okay. Stand A, your cut is good. Stand B, three seconds out of time. DQ. Three seconds, that's about six drivers for him and Heilige Brunner, unfortunately. It just took too much time up top there. And uh, six, a six cut pocket to start things off was quite okay, but he had too many hits in his second pocket. It just took too long. And this is really what it's all about, is setting those pockets. We know the guys can cut properly when they're on top and they have a good board but it's about getting those pockets set properly and making sure your boards are stable otherwise it's going to mess with your head the whole time you can see here Johannes Maurer his markings and he stuck with it he stuck with his markings completely he had a great angle on his second board as he pops up on there and you can see he could step well back on the board and I think he could have even stepped farther back there if he had the confidence and he actually did take a step out there so it was better for him to be able to push to the back there and you can see the big man Heile Gebrunner is still able to get up on the top of that block with a little hop and uh, start to work but uh, he was just too close to the boards and uh, unfortunately was using his whole upper body to drive through that block and he wasn't using his lower body or his legs he was straight legged and that tells me that he was just pooped by the time he got up there from working through that but a great job by Johannes Maurer to get himself a personal best at 2.11 and change. And that's a disappointed Hermann Heiligebrunner as we move on to our next heat and springboard with Peter Rich and Josef Laia. Damit man dann möglichst gut steht, vor allem in beim zweiten Springboard. Je weiter hinten die Athleten stehen, desto mehr Schwung und Dynamik können sie in ihre Schläge packen. Je mehr dieses Board sackt, desto näher muss ich an den Stamm hören und dann wird es richtig schwierig, aus dieser engen Position dann ausreichend der Kraft und Technik zu mobilisieren, um hier diesen Stamm zu erfüllen. Thank you very much. Okay, All so right. you can see here, there's so many things happening Eddie, on stage. Ready, it's, stand to your timber. It's as much about your Three, skill as it, two, about, it is one, about your go. routine and your headspace here. 
Joseph Leier getting into it. That's a seven hit pocket for Josef. Peter Rich still working his pocket. He's at about 10 hits now. And he'll set that board. Josef Flyer working on his second pocket now. Oh! And that's the risk right there. If you have a step in that pocket or if it's not clean, the board can slip out. And luckily that uh, board wasn't all the way at the top. A two meter fall with an axe in hand is no fun indeed. Josef Flyer doing a little bit of tippy tap house cleaning as he'll uh, place his second board. He wants to make sure he's got angle on that second board so that metal tooth at the front of the springboard will take purchase and grip in and it looks good. And uh, from my vantage point here, the angle is nice and flat so he could actually step back farther on that board and uh, push off of that back foot some. Peter Rich, he's got a good board as well. A little bit of sag on his, but it's not bad. And there's the difference you can see between the two boards. The sag on Peter Rich's board means that he's going to have to step forward a bit in order to make sure that he has got the power um, going in. He has, I did a quick check there to see if his board was maybe slipping out more. Uh, meanwhile, Josef Lyers has started to sag slightly, but he's already well deep into that first, uh, first side of his cut, so he might be okay. And at this point, he's not going to make any changes to that board. He just wants to make sure it stays in place and he can get his cut through as they both pass the minute 30 mark now. Peter Rich's board, it's holding, but it's sagging, and that's going to make life a little bit difficult for him. And you can see the strange angle of the back cut by Josef Lyer on his second side now as he starts to work the second side, closing in on a minute. Uh, two minutes, excuse me. And if he can get through in under two minutes, then he will take over the top spot in the springboard results there. He's pretty close. A couple more drivers should do it for him as he is just rounding up to two minutes here. And there he's got it, 202.53. That puts him in first place here in the springboard. And Peter Rich in second place in the springboard with a 205 and change. My timers are still running here on my see in my screen, and uh, now they're updating. There we go. So Josef Lyer with a 202.53, Peter Rich with a 205.85, move in to positions one and two in springboard. Remember, after the springboard, we're going to eliminate two more athletes at the bottom of the list before we head to the hot saw. There's a perfect view of our stage and those big stands that are up on the stage. So it's, a, it's one heck of a lot of work to set those stands up for the springboard. It takes quite a lot of time. And there seems to be some discussion there at the back of the stage between our two judges, Bart Janssen and Dr. Jörg Kurzenberger. And I'm hoping it's not a DQ for any reason whatsoever. Okay, good. Nope, we don't have a DQ, that's good. So uh, we do have official times locked in. Peter Rich with a 205.59 and Nielsa Flyer with a 202.10. And you can see here that setting of the pocket is one of the most crucial things. I know I keep repeating myself and harping on it, but I can't uh, stress enough how important those pockets are because these are the boards that are holding the lives of our athletes in place, yeah? Now watch what happens here with Peter's board. It comes straight out. Luckily, he hadn't pulled his ax out already, so he didn't have to worry about that razor-sharp instrument. Josef Flyer gingerly testing and making sure that that uh, top uh, board bites in and takes purchase on the pocket that he built. And this is where that accuracy comes in and plays such a crucial role in setting those pockets. You want to make sure you have good, clean cuts and that your board takes purchase and bites properly. And you could see the sag on Peter Rich's board was a bit of a problem for him right from the very get-go. And the ax came down with the block there. Um, normally I would say that uh, that's a uh, ground for a disqualification, but because it was in the block at the time, it, uh, I guess that was what the discussion was about at the back of the stage for our guys. And, you can see the team working there in the background, but Josef Lyer at the moment has the fastest time in springboard with uh, two more heats to go here, heat three and four. 
And uh, we're going to head over to Floti one more time. And he is with Hermann Heiligebrunner, who was the only athlete so far disqualified in the springboard. So unfortunately, DQ after three seconds too long. What's the reason for that? Yeah, he says that it's a little bit more difficult for the bigger guys, especially uh, getting those boards in place. And he said that the first board was okay. The second board held okay, but uh, he had to get closer to the block, so that made it more difficult to put the power into it. So he says he's a bit of the uh, grandfather for the sport, being in it since 2000, and uh, he's now currently uh, training. They have their own training hall, and he's teaching the guys, and he says uh, that uh, you actually learn a lot when you're training the young guys. Great. Uh, he says they don't really know the area of Seafield very well, but uh, they love the, the, the views and, uh, and the background and the beauty and everything. Uh, they were a little bit worried coming up here because of the, um, the flooding that was happening the weeks before, but uh, it's turned out fantastic. The, uh, the vacationers and the, and the locals here and the fans that have come out to, to watch the show, uh, they're really happy about everything that's turned out, and uh, you can't really complain. So really nice guy, Hermann Heiligebrunner. Good man, big man, um, and uh, he's teaching the young athletes how to uh, manage in the sport. And uh, it's nice that he is involved and in making sure that these young guys are right there and uh, being instructed in the fine details of timber sports. As the backstage area gets, or the main stage area gets set up, I could see uh, at least three stands are prepared. And the one final stand is uh, getting completed there. And uh, there you can see uh, the, the capella or church off into the background where we are. This is absolutely beautiful location here, Seafelt. I've been here a couple of times myself, both in winter and in summer. And there's so many things to do. Hiking, mountain biking. You can uh, just lie around the pool. They've got some... Uh, Really beautiful spa spaces here where you can uh, come with family or uh, maybe a wife or a boyfriend or girlfriend. And I mean, there's just a ton of stuff to do. And you can see the parasailers up there as well, taking off from one of the local mountains and sailing all the way down to our location here. And actually, they land on that grass field over to the right behind the BJ Events uh, service truck there. So there's a, a ton of stuff to see and do here in Seafeld. So it's a beautiful area and a great vacation spot for the summertime. So last little uh, finishing touches by Armin Kugler on his ladder as he's putting the long driver bolts into that block on the top there. And we will be ready for our final two heats. Once again, heat number three will be with Manuel Hoimer, who has been absolutely fantastic today. Three personal bests out of four events. He uh, struggled a little bit on the standing block chop, but an underhand and stocks on single buck. 
He walked away with personal best, which is great. He'll be up against Stefan Pinka in heat number three. In heat number four, we will have Gunther Dahlinger and Armin Kugler battling at it again with each other. So, Manuel, no matter what happens, as long as he cuts under two minutes and 30 seconds, he'll have a best time here as well. And Stefan Penka will be in the mix in heat number three as well. And you can see Manuel also dealing with the temperature out here. It is warm. Here we go. All right. Effie, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. So Stefan Penker, that's about six, seven hits for his pocket. Manuel still trying to set his. Stefan's a bit of a saggy first board, but like I said, that first board is unconsequential or inconsequential. Let's try and use the right words here, Troy. Inconsequential as Stefan Penker starts to set his second pocket. Manuel Hoima now putting his first board in. Looks like a good solid board. He'll gingerly test that as he will use that axe to try and get up onto that first board and set his pocket for number two. That looks like a very good board for Manuel Hoimer. He's taking a little bit too much time here as Stefan Penker is now on his top board and it's looking good for him. Stefan Penker's personal best is 146.77 as he gets working on that top block now. Manuel Hoimer doing a little bit of uh, work to get that second pocket set. He's got an excellent first board. He's a bit of a perfectionist here by the looks of it, but this is a sport where you have to have that perfection, that accuracy, and that speed because it's about these pockets getting set quickly and accurately. Stefan Penker working hard on that first side there, trying to get through nice and deep, getting some big chips coming out as we get to the one minute and 20 second mark. He's not as far back on his board as he could be. He's got a good solid board. I can't imagine why he wouldn't be a little bit farther back on it. He's got good angle. He doesn't need to worry. It's holding well as uh, he's got a nice sticky axe there. He's got to hammer it to get it out. Manuel Hoimer still working on that pocket, I think. Stefan Penker switching to the other side and Hoima's in big trouble here as he's doing a lot of housekeeping to get that pocket in place and board set. Now he wants to uh, get it up there and uh, yeah, Stefan Penker 156.79 and Manuel Hoima has got 30 seconds to do uh, a monumental amount of work. Uh, this is his first time competing with the springboard so this is really uh, a stressful situation for him to get up on top of that block or that board excuse me and start working on that block but unfortunately i believe that we're going to have a time out for him and a dq but this is about the experience that he's gaining in this particular discipline and the things that you need to do he's got a great second board though he did a really good job to get that board placed but he just lost the time to get up there unfortunately too much time with the pocket setting but both of those boards were beautiful for Manuel Hoimer, so he can take that and learn from it, absolutely. Stefan Penka, though, he's got himself a time of 156.48, so that moves him to the top of the springboard results, just ahead of Josef Laya and Peter Rich in two and three. So once again, I can't tell you how many things need to go exactly right for this discipline to be completed and not just completed well, just completed. It appears as though Manuel Hoima has actually cut his hand or okay, got himself a proper sliver up there. He seems to be favoring his right hand. So we do have a DQ for Manuel Hoimer. That's confirmed. And Stefan Penka with the 156.48 takes the top position so far in springboard with one more heat to go in round two. Let's take a look back here. So this is, as I've been saying from the get-go, the critical part, getting the pockets. The first pocket, you could basically just uh, dirty birdie it. You know, get a board in there, get on it, set your second pocket. Take the time on your second pocket if you need to and get it set. Manuel Hoimer, he had his first pocket. It was a beautiful pocket. The board was in great position. 
but he just took way, way, way too long setting the second pocket. I mean, his second pocket was uh, a picture of perfection when he had his board set in there, and had he had the, the minute or so to cut through the top block, it would have been fine. You could see, actually, he went up there and, and, and just continued to work. We didn't see that in the live, unfortunately, because we concentrated so much on Stefan Penka there. But Manuel Hoimer took a lot, a lot, a lot of time to work that second pocket into position. And there you can see, quick wave to the audience. That's a, a rough way to go, uh, but you know, that's gonna be a learning experience for Manuel, and he's gonna take that home. Those pockets were great. It just was the cut at the top that wasn't there for him. Okay, moving on to the final heat in springboard before we drop two athletes from the bottom of the list. And there you see our interviewee from earlier on, Gunther Dahlinger and Armin Kugler on stage for this heat. And now both of these guys have the experience. And we're looking at uh, Armin Kugler right now. He doesn't like that block. He is angry with that block right now. He wants to be done with it. All right, Effie, ready. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Four hit pocket for Armin Kugler. He doesn't care about that first one. He just wants to get up there and get that second pocket set. Four hits there, five. Six hits now for Armin on the second pocket. He's going to take that as a six hit pocket. He's setting his board now. Gunther Dahlinger has got his first pocket set. It took him about 10, 12 hits to get there. And now Armin Kugler with a beautiful second board is working on that top block. And he's got the people in the audience wild as they're screaming for him. Gunther Dahlinger working on setting that second pocket. Could this be a really nice run from Armin Kugler? Armin Kugler with a national record springboard, 52-18, fantastic, absolutely amazing run from Armin Kugler. A four hit per first pocket, a six hit second pocket, and a time under a minute for the big man. He's done it, a national record, fantastic run for Armin Kugler, 52-18. Gunther Dahlinger just passing 120 now as he's on that top board. He's looking good though. He's got a great top board. It's nice and flat, no sag at all. He's using those legs and hips to cut through. He's got a minute to finish it off. Plenty of support from the audience here in Seyfeld. Everybody is on Gunther Dahlinger's side as he rounds up towards the two minute mark, 54, 55, 56. Switching over to the other side, he should be able to get through there and make it in under two minutes and 30. He's close to it. The audience is pumping with him every time he takes a driver. Here it goes, and it's done in 2.09, 07. And that's a personal best for Gunther Dahlinger. He'll bank that one as well. Great job though by Armin Kugler with a fantastic 4-6 and up on top with a 52-18. Great job, the only man under a minute here today. So it seems pretty clear to me that Armin Kugler is going to have what he needs to be among the top eight in the European ranking to see him at the World Championships. It's coming down now to the last discipline, the hot saw. Let's find out though what our rankings look like after this discipline springboard is done here and who is going to be dropping out of our top eight. In. So we've got a personal best on the left and a national record on the right, great job. Okay, we'll take a look back at the slow-mo here really quickly. So you can see here on the right-hand side, that's Armin Kugler. That right there is his fourth hit. 
and he sets the axe. And like I said, he doesn't care about this first one. He just wants up and to set that second pocket and get that board in place. Had to work that axe out a little bit as he gets up on the second board. Dahlinger is setting his first board in place and starting to work. Now, Kugler on top with a great second, uh, second board, nice and flat. He could start working at it. Gunther Dahlinger had a lot of steps in that second pocket. You don't want to have those in there. One of those steps releases and uh, doesn't allow that uh, board to stay in place. You could be in trouble. And there is an excited Armin Kugler as he knows he's got the national record there with a adjusted time now of 51.83. I'm looking at our clocks here. And uh, even after that's done and said and done, it's gotten a bit faster. And a great job by Gunther Dahlinger. Get a personal best 208.85. Very nicely done. So let's take a quick look at the springboard results here as uh, we come back into the studio with our two German commentators. And uh, we'll have a look at how everything is affected as the ants in the pants are by to work on the stage in the background there to set it up. Oh, it looks like we're going to go to an interview with Armin Kugler first. Yes, we are. He says everything was great. It's his favorite discipline, and the axe was perfect for the wood, so he cut through great, and he's got a national record. Super happy about it. <laughs> he said he had a little bit of... Uh, 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 He's a little bit afraid of heights before, and that's why he tries to cut it as quickly as possible to get it done. So the question is, what do you got to do in the hot side to get through? And his answer is, it's not my favorite discipline, but you just have to go full gas to get through this discipline. And there you go. National record holder for the springboard, Armin Kugler. And uh, thank you to Floti. Great interviews as always. And we're going to take a look now, hopefully, at the rankings of the discipline and where we stand moving in towards our third round and the hot saw, the maker or breaker discipline. Okay, so there you see the round two single buck is uh, done and dusted, and the springboard, Armin Kugler on top, Stefan Penka, Josef Leier one and two. Let's see how that changes things in the overall standings. That means we are going to lose uh, Hermann Heiligebrunner and Jos uh, uh, Johannes Meyer. Uh, excuse me, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we only take the top six athletes into the hot saw. So that means moving into the hot saw, we have Peter Rich, Josef Leier, Manuel Heimer, Stefan Penker, Gunther Dahlinger, and Armin Kugler. And as uh, Floti alluded to earlier on, this is the maker or the breaker discipline. It's really all about the hot saw here. So let's take a look at the hot saw discipline. So the hot saw is a highly tuned machine, very often taken from a ski do or a motorcycle, the engine. It can turn that blade or that chain at up to 250 kilometers an hour. The saw itself can weigh up to 35 kilograms and cost up to 6,000 euros. In the discipline, the athletes have 15 centimeters to cut three cookies, and these cookies need to be complete and on the deck and no cutouts and no cut lines are allowed. Otherwise, as you've seen with the stock saw, it will result in a disqualification. So these incredibly powerful saws have to be controlled and driven through the cuts. As you can see here, three clean cookies on the deck is the only way that you can have the points counting. And here you can gain up to 18 points in this discipline. So there's still lots of open space for these guys to gain points 
And you can see the season's best 4.75 and the world record 4.62 seconds. Absolutely incredible time. The hot saw world record held by American Adam Lethko at the United States Pro Semifinals from Pool B. So uh, that is a time to be taken into consideration here. National record 6.53, and that's also a very quick time as Peter Rich and Josef Leier get set on stage. Now, because these saws are so expensive and so finicky, anything can happen. A chain can come off. The saw might not start. Uh, this is one of the reasons why they call it the maker or the breaker. It can make your day or it can break your heart. Um, many of these saws are owned by the athletes, but many of the saws, are, there's quite a few saws that are loaned to the athletes by Bart Janssen events uh, in the case of uh, them not having their own saw. Um, and so it's... Um, very much a love-hate relationship in those cases because the athletes who own their own saws will have uh, a very intimate relationship with their saws. They'll know exactly what the saw sounds like when it's running clean. They'll know exactly how it feels in their hands. They'll know exactly the fuel mixture and the air mixture that needs to be taken care of in the saw. They'll know what kind of exhaust they'll have on it. And any number of things can be done. Unlike in the stock saw, these are highly tuned machines that are made for cutting in competition only. You'll never see a saw like this at use in the woods. It just is too inefficient and uh, these high performance machines can really, really be a problem if you don't treat them well. So Stefan uh, Penka, excuse me, Peter Rich seems to be having a problem with, I don't know if it's with the saw or with the block itself. Uh, he did point something out at the saw. So it looks like uh, Bart Janssen has gone down to uh, check on something, but maybe it's not uh, quite what I'm thinking here. So let's see how this all goes down. They will right. have... Warm up your saw. They will have time to warm up the saws now and get them started. The reason behind this is to make sure that the chamber is warm, the exhaust is blown out, and uh, any of the carbon that was sitting in the chamber is blown out of the saw. Uh, and to make sure that when you do pull that starter cord, you get a nice clean start. That doesn't always mean it's going to start. That's the finicky part of these machines is uh, you can uh, get right there, have a nice taut starter cord, pull it, and the thing won't start. You have to rewrap, and that kills your time. 30 seconds. All right, so there you can see both of these guys have their start cords in place and ready to go. A couple of practice lifts by Joseph, or Peter Rich, excuse me. Josef Flyer, he is just concentrated on making sure that he's got everything absolutely as desired. So this is our final discipline in our third round here today. And this Etsy, is for all ready. the marbles. Here Stand we go. Stand to your timber. Three, two, one, go. Bit of a hang up by Peter Rich as he is struggling to get that first cookie started. Josef Flyer, he's got to reset and recut there. And look at that saw just pull into the block there. 10 9 1 for Josef Flyer. Peter Rich struggling to get those final cookies on the deck, and it's a 16 6 4 for him. Oh, but he's got a cutout, so he wants to go back and do another one, but he doesn't have enough line. Oh no, that's going to be a problem for Peter Rich. We'll see a DQ there for sure. Uh, but this is all about uh, learning the machine, learning the discipline, and making sure you've got all this stuff locked and loaded. And we do see a cutout on the side, and this is what Bart Janssen is doing. It's a bit like putting a puzzle back together, and he wants to make sure that he's got all of the pieces there. Unfortunately, he doesn't have them all, so we will probably have a DQ for an incomplete or cutout cookie for Peter Rich. Unfortunately, Josef Flyer with a 10 7 1 We'll have a good cut. Okay. Stand one incomplete disc, DQ. Stand two, your cut is good. <laughs> so 10 7 1 isn't going to be the fastest time, but Josef Lyer will take that over a DQ any day of the week. And we'll get set up for our next heat on stage. We'll take a quick look back at what happened in that one. So you can see here Peter Rich hovered above it a little bit. He stepped back out. Looked to me like he had an okay cut. And I'm, I'm, from that angle, I can't really tell what was happening. Josef Lyer, there's a bit of an angle on his initial cut, but uh, it was a nice clean up cut on his second cookie and he had space. 
to make that second cut. It did come really close to the line. He reset himself then and watch this machine pull in as he applies the gas there on that third cookie. He got lucky on that one. It was almost a cut line and he was really too close to the line for his own liking. Here, Peter Rich, he was from this angle, it's a bit different. So he had a really wide cookie and then he wanted to readjust it and come over. And there, that was the thinner cookie right there. And that was part of the problem. He was cutting through at an angle, got to the bottom of this cut thicker than at the top, had to position the sock correctly in order to start the upcut. Nice thin cookie on the upcut, but the problem was here, he had already made a couple of cuts at the top and lost the condition of the cookie. And it was a, uh, it was a broken cookie, so it was incomplete, then went back and recut really close to the line, but then he had a cutout because the angle wasn't there. So it was a bit of a troublesome cut there for Peter Rich, and there is the result, the DQ for him, and a 10-7-1 time for Josef Leier. He's in the mix. All right, so Manuel Neuheimer, Stefan Penker, Stefan Penker's best time in 8.08, Manuel Heumer, barring a DQ, will log in a best time today as well. Manuel Heumer marking his block there. You see a lot of these guys with these grease pens out there. They'll put uh, a mark at the top, or two marks in this case for Manuel because uh, he wants to have his guidelines for his cuts. All right. And you can see up. that uh, Red Bull blade on the saw of Stefan Penka. It's a wider, thicker, bulbous blade, unlike the, or bars, I should say. Unlike the, the other saws that we see on stage there, like the, the bar on uh, Manuel Heumers. Thirty seconds. All right, so, and uh, we're also gonna hear two different sounds of motors on stage there as uh, the motor for Stefan Penka is a Wankel motor, so it's gonna be a much deeper, throatier, growlier sound, which I love. Uh, it, uh, it can be really addicting, that sound on those saws. They can also be quite finicky, those saws. Athletes, ready. Stand to your timber. All right, here we go. Three, Manuel Heumer, two, Stefan Penka. one, go. Penker looking good. I know Heimer looking very good as well. Lined up nicely. He's going to have a bit of a, a time, but you know, he wants to get that time in there and make sure it's clean. 12 8 2, personal best for Heimer. As we said, he would have that if he's got three good cookies on the deck, then it will count. It looks like he's got three good cookies on the deck and no cut line. We should get a thumbs up from Bart Janssen there. And Stefan Penker has got three big old fat cookies on the deck, but it looks like he did not cut the line, so should also be safe. Okay, both cuts are good. All right, great job by Manuel Hoima. He's had a great day today. Personal bests across the board with the exception of the springboard and the standing block chop, but he has been really, really solid to get himself in and among the best six here. And you can see Stefan Penka with a great 9.45 time and a uh, clean cut for him. So let's take a look at this again. That first cookie, yeah, pretty heavy duty. Second cookie as well. It was a pretty decent second cookie, but that third cookie, man, he came close to the line at the bottom of that cut. But an incredible run still. Nevertheless, we'll take it. And uh, we've got some times locked and loaded with one more heat to go to determine who our Austrian champion will be. You can see this first cut from Manuel. It is massive. The reason why you don't want to do that is you don't want to, you don't leave yourself much room to cut those extra two cookies. But the fact that he managed to cut those extra two cookies, look at this last one. This is a beautiful thin cookie. Do that from the beginning, Manuel. And you've got it locked and loaded every single time. 
The accuracy on that last cookie was great. Took a little bit more time, but it was nice and clean, and he's got a time in the book. So our last heat coming up for the day in the hot saw. This is for all the marbles. It's pretty clear to me that there's no chance for anybody else to catch up to Armin Kugler. Gunther Dahlinger has 49 points leading up to this discipline. Armin Kugler has 64. Armin Kugler just needs to have a clean cut. If Armin Kugler gets disqualified here, however, though, Gunther Dahlinger could win it with a clean cut All and right. a win One in this up. discipline. Yes, so. All right, rewrapping the start cords for both of these guys here. That is a very loose chain on Gunther Dahlinger's saw on that blade. It looked very, very loose and that makes me nervous. Seconds. I hope it doesn't come off for him. Armin Kugler following his routine, setting everything up. Hey, you can see at the bottom there that uh, it's got a little bit of space hanging there, uh, but this is his own saw, so he knows this saw. So obviously he is feeling pretty confident with it. I just hope that chain stays on. And this is one of the reasons why they have those Lexan shields in between the athletes as well as in the front and the back of the athletes. So and if something Eddie, does fly away ready. from the saw, to that your uh, timber. the guys on either side Three, or end two, of them will be safe. One, go! Nice clean cut so far for Kugler. Oh no! And Kugler's got a problem. He's got to rewrap and restart that saw. Dahlinger with a 10.48 personal best. That means the time for Kugler is going to be immensely killed. He's got to cut that last cookie. He's got to get that saw started again. Major problem for Kugler. And he's also got a time limit that he's got to think about too. Oh no. Are we going to see a DQ at the minute mark here for... Armin Kugler, he's got to get that saw started and cut that last cookie to have a time to count. Here we go, he's got it started, throws away that starter cord, and he's got that last cookie cut. 46-22, that is an immensely slow time, and it's only because he had to re-wrap and re-cut, but it looks like he's got a complete cookie. In fact, he's got three on the deck. That's frustrating for Armin. It was on the last cut that the saw just stopped, but I don't see a cut line or anything, so he should have a good cut. Well, that is going to be the dead last position with a time for Armin Kugler. But it's not going to make a difference in the overall standings, I don't believe. That has to be confirmed still. But Gunther Dahlinger with a massively good cut and a jump up in the overall rankings. Okay. Both cuts are good. <laughs> Armin Kugler's thinking, are they really good? <laughs> I don't know. All right, so we now have it. Times are locked and loaded. We'll take a look back at the slow-mo here and maybe we see what happens. So both of the guys got good start. Here we see the first cut from Kugler on the right-hand side. Nice transition, good clean-up cut. And he was quick at this point. And then he starts on the down cut and bang, the saw just stops right at the bottom of the cut. I don't know, I almost think it might have been better for him to make like a single buck and saw it back and forth. It might have been quicker. We can see here Gunther Dahlinger. Oh, he's got a bit of an angle on that first cut. He's got to be careful. Second cut was a nice thin cookie though. Really good clean up cut, got space. Locks into that second cut, but the angle came close to the line on the bottom. He was safe though at the end. Two clean cuts or two good cuts. Looking at this from a different angle here. And right here, getting back in there. Oh, right there, it doesn't look like he released on the uh, gas or anything. Don't know what happened, it just stopped completely. It's almost like he ran into a nail or a piece of metal, which is definitely not in the wood. And then he's gotta go back, rewrap that thing, and cut that third cookie. And that is a frustrating thing, but he kept his cool and uh, managed to get it under a minute, so that's important. So here we go, hot saw ranking, Stefan Penka with the fastest time, a 9.45, that's great for him. 
He'll take those 18 points any day of the week. Gunther Dallinger with a 10.26 and Josef Leier with the top three in the hot saw. Kugler with fifth place there. Um, but uh, we'll take a look at the final results there. Armin Kugler, yeah, a good six points ahead of Gunther Dallinger who jumped up into second place here in uh, the final ranking and Stefan Penka with a solid third place there. So Armin Kugler is your Austrian champion. I just uh, uh, Guido thanking Armin Kugler for an absolute thrilling final with that crazy uh, saw cutout and uh, having to restart and cut in the 46 seconds or 45.99 seconds. So, uh, yeah, folks, that was uh, about as mad as you could get. And, and that's uh, exactly why I say that is the most finicky discipline and the maker or the breaker. So there we see the final results in the overall standings from top to bottom with Armin Kugler again being solid throughout the uh, entire day, taking wins in the single buck and uh, springboard uh, and wins in the underhand chop and the standing block chop. He was not so top in the stock saw, having uh, fourth place there, but uh, it was enough with a solid day of consistent performances for Armin Kugler. Uh, Gunther Dahlinger also a very solid day today as he uh, kept uh, you know pretty good in the solid uh, positions throughout the day to make sure that he was in second place and Stefan Penker also um, a bit of a rough start on the uh, on the single buck with a fairly low ranking there but he was good the rest of the way through and we're going to head up onto the stage and bring our athletes up. All right, so in 10th place, we're going to bring up Christian Peerauer. <laughs> Tied for points with Christian Peerauer, we have in 9th place Matthias Hinterreiter. Johannes Maurer, eighth place today and earning 26 points on the day. Well done by him. Just missing out on the hot saw. And seventh place, the big man earning 28 points today. A crowd favorite and one of my favorites, Hermann Heiligebrunner. <laughs> All right, so moving up to sixth place, 39 points, and that belongs to Peter Rich. All right, now moving into the top five places in fifth place with 49 points, Manuel Hoimer with an absolutely fantastic performance today. Four personal bests from six disciplines, and you gotta like that. Great job by Manuel as he heads over to shake hands with the boys. I love the uh, camaraderie and the team friendliness here on stage. It is fantastic. Manuel Heimer, 49 points today and a great job. And now we have fourth place 
one of the legends in Austrian timber sports, earning 51 points today, making it all the way to the hot saw round. Number four, Josef Laia. <laughs> All right, and now we move on to our top three. 62 points, a win in the hot saw, the fastest man of the day there and a fantastic stable set of runs through underhand stock, standing block, single buck, and springboard. Stefan Penker is your bronze medalist here today at the Austrian Championship. Fantastic job, Stefan Penker. Well done. With 64 points in the silver medal position, he was up, he was down, but he stayed consistent, calm, and collected throughout the entire day. Günther Dahlinger. All right, there you go, silver medalist Gunther Dahlinger receiving his medal right now. Alexander Hembacher, the uh, CEO of Steel Austria. And now we move to what you could say is a living legend in Austrian steel timber sports life. It is Armin Kugler, 70 points. He won four out of six disciplines today. He is the winner and will more than likely represent Austria at the World Championships in November. Your gold medalist today, Armin Kugler. And again, a consistent performance from the cat. Fantastic job by him. And again, you can't say enough about how good this man is. Und dann wartet auch schon der Bürgermeister der Gemeinde Seefels mit der Trophäe. Hier kommt sie, die Trophäe für den österreichischen Staatsmeister 2023, Armin Kugler. <laughs> There's the character coming out of him now. Armin Kugler, your champion, once again defends the title. Unbelievable.
There you go, folks. Your podium here. Armin Kugler atop the podium once again. I think that's a hundred times he's been on that podium in the last thousand years. The guy is amazing. He's an incredible athlete. Timber Sports belongs to him in Austria, and he is somebody that all the young and up and coming athletes can look up to as a target to go towards. Absolutely fantastic as they'll gather everybody in there, all 10 athletes squishing in with the mayor of Seafeld and the CEO of Steel Austria to get the big picture up there. An absolutely great job by everybody, the crew, Bart Janssen Events and his gang making sure that stage is ready and prepared every single time. An unbelievable undertaking. We also have to say a big thank you to Seafeld for hosting us here. And this weekend is not over yet, folks. We've got lots of action coming tomorrow. We have the European Nations Cup for the rookies and the pros tomorrow starting at 2 p.m. Make sure you come by and join us. We're going to take a look back at some of the highlights of the day. And I'm signing off and letting the pictures speak for themselves. I'm Troy Mannering saying goodbye everybody. Take care and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Ich glaube, hier ist genauso die Schmucke jetzt weggeblieben wie mir. Ob sie echt sehen, das nachher auch noch auf ein kühles Erwischen zu sein. One last time with the European rankings here, folks, and we can see Armin Kugler in seventh position. So Glenn Penlingen is still in the mix now, but uh, he is on the bubble because we still do have two more nations that are going to be competing. Czechia is coming up in the next week, and uh, Germany still has to battle, although Germany has an automatic buy. So depending on how well our Czech athletes do, we may have another shuff shuffling of the European rankings. So Armin Kugler is more or less safe. Glenn Penlington is the guy that's on the bubble at the moment, so we hope to see him at the World Championships. I'm going to say bye for real this time and enjoy those last pictures and highlights of the day. Thanks for joining, everybody. Ciao.